Hey guys, welcome to The Art of Comics. I'm your host, Andre Salzar. Today, I'm going to go through Epic Magazine, August from 1981. This is Barry Windsor Smith, um, his cover here. Basically, this is just a quick run through. I'm going to run through the, the issue and just kind of like shoot from the hip. It's going to be kind of a fun episode. I don't put a lot of research into these. We're just going to flip through it, check it out. Those of you who have it can read along, or those of you who don't, you don't got to buy it now. You can just check it out. So um, I'll just give you my thoughts on what's going down. Uh, first off, let's start with this cover. Okay, so Epic Illustrated, Marvel Magazines of Adult Fantasy. This is basically a magazine to avoid the Comics Code Authority stamp. They used magazine format following the footsteps of Heavy Metal, I would say, is the big one, right? Who was originally published by the National Lampoon guys. Um, basically, Marvel um, kind of cribbed that style and that kind of publishing pattern and created Epic. Now, you might say, well, they're posers. The good news is more stories, more great art more mature stuff. So there are actually some great things in this magazine series. And while it might not be as well-known or popular as Heavy Metal Magazine, um, there's just some great stuff in here. And uh, where Heavy Metal, I believe, is more kind of Euro-focused, of course, originally, those first years for sure, this does have some more of the American art, which is kind of fun because we get to see them kind of stretch their legs doing different types of, uh, different topics. So here we go. Um, love this cover. This is the Barry Windsor Smith. Um, I love his stuff. He, um, he's good, man. He's got good stuff and this is a great coloring too. I love the great, the, the color job on this. This was a great cover. Uh, oh, what do you know? And speaking of heavy metal, we even got a freaking ad for it for the movie. So this was, remember this is 81. Uh, the magazine came out in 77. So I guess the movie um, was not too much longer after that, which is actually kind of surprising. I thought the movie was later. So yeah. And this is only issue number seven. So um, I did previously an issue, I think was number six or number, no, excuse me, number two, number seven. I haven't tracked all these down. They're not that easy to find, um, but they're not that expensive too. If I just got to look, so here's what here's what's going down. Uh, Denny O'Neill, we like him. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, dude, look at this. Isn't this cool? Dungeons and Dragons Adventure. I remember this. Yeah, dude. This was back in the day when you would send a catalog to TSR, and look at that logo. I love that old logo. Uh, with the like the Zeus face, um, yeah, dude, I like this art. It was different, man, and the funky watercolors and stuff. Yeah, that that brings back a lot of memories. I love playing D and D. I still actually just played it a couple of days ago, um, so I'm a big fan, big fan of that. Editor and publisher Stan Lee, uh, Archie Goodwin is the editorial director. Consulting editor Jim Shooter, Milton Schiffman, Joe Duffy. I mean, this is like, look, editorial, Larry, ha Larry Hamma, who created, you know, um, G.I. Joe. Not created G.I. Joe, but did the G.I. Joe comics. Uh, Ralph Macchio, which did a lot of editing for Spider-Man back in the day. Ramita, Virginia Ramita. Let's just assume that's related to John Ramita in some way because nepotism is strong in all these little small um, businesses. Oh, lettering, yeah. Tom um, Orzakowski. Yeah, he's big, big time letter. A lot of stuff. I'm just checking out these names. Well, these are kind of, this is back when they were in uh, Madison Avenue. Okay. Overview. Yeah, Baron Windsor Smith, Neil Adams. There's a bunch of different people we're going to see today. It's going to be fun. Okay, Holocaust. Who did Holocaust? Let's check it out real quick. 
Holocaust. Story and art by Neil Adams, the great Neil Adams. I got to see him at his new shop. He's got a shop over in Burbank now. And uh, I'm a member of a group called CAPS, which is the uh, Cartoonist Art Professionals Society. And um, cool bunch of guys. And anyway, so we had a, like a, like he gave us talk and spoke to us. And a uh, really cool guy, really neat to talk about it. About comics and he's actually a cool guy um, yeah I like him a lot this is great stuff actually I really like this this was before freaking Dark Knight Returns biscuits so don't say that Frank Miller came up with all this look boom boom right okay so this is a great page let me just look at this holy crap look at what's going on so many things are happening um, yeah, I mean, I really like this too. Um, I like the coloring of it. Yeah, this is really good. Look at this. And this looks like this might be page, we got different paper style, but this might be a full story, but I might need to read this whole thing. Is this a full story? Yeah, this doesn't say part one or anything like that. This might be, here we go. Great figure too. Great job on her. Yeah, I like the coloring of this stuff. I like it. Um, I like this old style. I like those panels. And now we got kind of a, a different paper stock here for this. Yeah, I'm going to have to read this. This looks good. I'm going to put this in my read pile. I have a few. I got so many freaking books I got to read, guys. It's not even freaking funny. And I think about like, what should I read? It's like, I got so much to read. Which is a good thing to have, I guess. Good problem to have. Um, yeah, okay. I gotta read Copra next. I gotta read that damn book because everyone keeps talking about it. Then I gotta read Canon from Hollywood. Okay. I like this. This is really neat. Yeah. I love the, I love the brushwork here. I love this. Yeah. Okay. This is really great. I'm I'm gonna read this, dude. I might even read this tonight. Screw it. Yeah. Then it continues. Sweet. Okay, good. So this looks like a full story. Good. It's exciting. Daniel Neal's writing something about fantasy film geeks should be walking around grinning from the next several months, considering before autumn they'll have seen Superman two. Outland, Dragon Slayer, The Hand, Escape from New York, Riders, Raiders of the Lost Ark. And they've already probably seen Knight Riders Excalibur. Okay, so they're just talking about how 1981, there's tons of like fantasy film geeks, right? I don't know if I'd put Superman 2 and Outland as, you know, or Escape from New York as fantasy film, but maybe, maybe so. What's this? Pepe Mor Morano. Morano. Don't know, but I like this too. This looks cool. Yeah. It's got a, a little bit more European kind of look to it. Can you see that good? Make sure you guys can see this. Kind of an Olympic tail. Yeah, I dig it. I like the colors in this too. Nice textures. Now we got this fancy paper. I don't know why they did that. Why does some paper have a glossy? Comment below if you know what that's about. I don't know why some of it's like dull paper, newsprint, some of it's fancy. It's all mixed in. Hmm. Vision and Quest, The Art of Barry Windsor Smith by Archie Goodwin. Yeah. So he knew what was he talking about. Look at that. Yeah, art, see, Barry Windsor Smith, I mean, this is like straight up illustration stuff. I I always associate him with like Conan the Barbarian and later on uh, he did some stuff, I think it was Exo Man of War, For Valiant, things like that. Um, but this is kind of neat. This is neat and this probably a nice little interview he did with, with 
Archie. Yeah, look at this. This is nice. You see that? Yeah, it's a nice little. There's that from that cover. Yeah. I like this too, actually. This is really nice. Look at all the detail there, the, the line work, modeling. You could tell he's influenced a lot by the classics as well as, um, I don't know, maybe even Topi. Well, not really, probably, but probably Qbert and those guys. That's great. He, had, he has great muscles and great kind of anatomy stuff. I mean, to do Conan, you got to have that, right? And then he's got this nice kind of fantasy, romantic kind of flavor to it. Okay, what is this? Oh, Starlin. Did he, did he do the art too? Let's see here, where are we? Uh, yeah, story and art by Jim Starlin. I like that. Big scroll looking. This is painted too. It's kind of nice. So, oh yeah, this whole thing is painted. This is like a Chaikin's, you know, um, Cody Starbuck kind of deal, which we will get into because I think he's he's coming up next. Um, I don't want to set my big head in here, but yeah, it's kind of neat. Yeah, it's all kind of painted. He's kind of going out there. I mean, that's what was kind of probably nice about these gigs where you really can kind of go out and try different things. You didn't have to use like nine panel grids and things. You can kind of like tell stories however you want, you know, with big panels and, and big splash pages and crazy layouts and, you know, unique things. And that's really probably fun for them to really stretch creatively, you know. I like that a lot. That's actually really nice. Position. It's pretty cool. I dig this. I do remember this now that I'm going through this again. That's a nice little spaceship, kind of a cruise liner. Sci-fi cruise. It's kind of a neat effect too. A lot, of, a lot of white paint going in there. Cool. I dig it. It's going to continue next issue, so that's only part one. The egg. Kind of a Fumetti. Commas with photography. It's kind of a neat idea. Actually, I like this. Yeah, this is kind of neat. You don't. You definitely don't see this kind of stuff either nowadays. Just the bizarre. I'm working on a stir right now. I just want a super bizarre. What is this? Oh, John Bolton. I really like John Bolton. Um. Oh gosh, what was it that he did? Was it? Mm, damn it. Uh, was it a vampire thing? It was something. It's in my. I visualize, I can't figure out what the name of it is, but it was a John Bolton story he did back in like the 80s or 90s, 80s that I really liked. And I used to get him confused with Brian Bolin. Totally different guy. But John Bolton is great. This is, this already, I can say, is really impressive. I love the paint. I love the color. Look at that beautiful blue. So, so good. Yeah. That's really cool. I'm digging it. Oh, hippocampus. Hippocamp hippocampus? Is that what they're called? Or a uh, hippopcamus, something like that? Look at these beautiful colors. The, the ocean the, is really rich. I really like these colors. And these are kind of really neat. This is kind of stuff you don't get to see much, you know? It's fully painted artwork like this. This is definitely that kind of heavy metal type. 
fun fantasy that you don't get a chance to to look at and see. Look at that, that's great. It's a great face right there. Yeah, I like it a lot. Look at that ripped rip that dude right through. Yeah, that's cool. The gold commercial from Coca Cola. And here's a little black and white guy. After looking at that color, it's hard to see this black. After seeing how lush this is and how nice, it's hard to kind of like, oh, okay, let's go into this now. Uh, and maybe that's why they did the colors, the page stocks actually. The color ones had to have this fancy, but they wanted to cut some corners on printing costs and just to kind of make things work financially. So they maybe they just went with this for the, uh, the black and white stuff. I'm just throwing that out there. I don't know, I made that up. Huh. Ooh, what is this? I like this. Egyptian. I like that. That's that's nice too. This whole thing right here is nice. Yeah. Oh, here's the last of uh, Holocaust. I want to know if it continues or if this is it. Because I want to read this now. So oh, snap. Something's going down here with this business. Now this is clearly referenced. Some drawing he saw somewhere, but that's okay. We're not going to blame him. Is that the end? Yeah, that's it. Okay, I'm going to have to read this freaking thing. We might have to go into this detailed. Um, just because this looks kind of out there and crazy, and Neil Adams doing it, I really want to know. I really want to read this now. We're gonna read this. We might have to do it as an episode just on that, because um, Neil Adams is one of the masters. What is this business? The most incredible book of all time. The Necro Comic Con. The Necro Necro Mo. Hang on. Necro Nomicon. Yeah, Necro Nomicon. Necronomicon, what is this? Is this the one made? By, yep, can probably enter by the Mad Arab. Yeah, this is this is a. Um, what is Al Alistair Crowley has nothing to do with this book? This is about H.P. Lovecraft, his little thing. Oh my goodness, this is just trying to sell some cheesy books. How much was this? Fifty bucks. Shoot, that's expensive back then. Oh my goodness. Okay, it's cheesy. Um, that's kind of a cool painting right there, that booze ad. So there you go. Okay, quick little video. Actually, that didn't last very long. Epic, I just wanna thumb through it. I am gonna read that Holocaust, and I'm gonna report back on that, because this actually looks really neat, and I'm all about Neil Young, or <laughs> Neil Adams. Uh, so I, I wanna read this, so anyway. Thanks a lot, you guys. Uh, click the subscribe button and the notify bell icon to know what's going down with me. I do two videos a week, so check them out. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all you guys. Read more comics, and if you can make some, make them. Tell your story. Bye.